we're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign of what's going to happen to these other workers moving forward. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher Stock Channel. And guys, please like and subscribe if you do like what you're listening to. Please inform your friends and family and spread all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances and understand how the world really works. Because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that everything is planned out. Now, we have stocks rallied to a record as Biden has sworn in. Now, guys, we know it's nothing but the Fed pumping it up, but we know what? We're definitely headed for a crash. Now, we have billionaire investors says, enjoy the bull market while it lasts. Because you know, guys, they're already hedging. They're already ready because they make money whether the stock market goes up or goes down. It just doesn't matter. Now, we have RBC says we expect a 9% market gain by end of year, which is not a lot, but says a pullback will be coming soon. So, guys, now we see the media playing both sides. So that's when you know that something is about to happen because ordinarily every single report that I see, everything is bullish. But now you have the billionaire investors are coming out, say, get ready. So they know we're going to have a pullback. We see the yields keep rising, even though they were a little down today. They're not in letting the yields down, guys. And I'm going to speak about that later. Now, we have Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and J.P. Morgan, a case for higher value to separate themselves. Now, guys, we know that when it comes to banks, we definitely want to buy it. I went over that. Do not forget to check out my first video of the year. I told you what stocks you should position yourself in, and you definitely should be in a great position right now. But we know the banks are doing what? Buying their own stocks back, guys. It's nothing but manipulation. Remember, stock buybacks, I went over it, were illegal until Reagan. Why, why would you even be able to buy your own stock? You're manipulating your own price. Just think about it, guys. Now, we have Abalon Therapeutics blast six-fold with reshape merger deal. And we know that's the pill that you actually swallow, lose weight. I know about four or six years ago, it was all over the place, but I haven't heard anything of it since. But guys, we have Jack Ma returns. A sighting of Jack Ma returns and Alibaba shares soar. Now, Alibaba, of course, was on my list, wasn't it? For the stocks to buy the beginning of the year. Because like I said, don't forget to check out my first video of the year. But definitely Alibaba is not going anywhere, guys. It's the Chinese Amazon. We have the ETF GDX. I'm not your financial advisor. It's not financial advice. Please do your own research. But while we keep doing all this money printing, we know that the actual Janet Yellen was a part of the Fed. Now I'm part of the Treasury. I've been over it several times, several videos already. They have it on lock, guys. With definitely the dollar is just going to be destroyed. Not going anywhere because, of course, it's going to be digitized, already digitized already. But the fact is we're going to be moving over to cryptocurrencies. So, But definitely, guys, you want to give yourself a hedge. Of course, you want the physical gold, but this is also a play. Do not forget about that. And lastly, guys, what's not being talked about right now, because right now the housing market is booming, but you have behind the curtain, you see it falling to pieces, guys. Delinquencies are going through the roof. We also know before Steve Mnuchin left, tried to push Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac private, guys. They want to take the house down, guys. Remember what the World Economic Forum stated. You will own nothing, but you will be happy. Y'all, don't forget to check out my Crypto Teacher channel. 
Learn the cryptocurrency, the new economy, the fourth industrial revolution is coming in. Like, subscribe. Also, with this channel, guys, like, subscribe, spread everywhere. Y'all have a wonderful day. At the economy before COVID, which was running at a fully employed level, was running a trillion dollar deficit. You're not supposed to have a trillion dollar deficit when you have a fully employed economy. So, you know, we then got COVID and now we're just uh, we're spending into oblivion. Um, and, uh, you know, we have we have a very difficult situation out there because I think in the near term, it's hard to fight the market. You know, you have uh, extraordinarily stimulative fiscal and monetary policies, all of which I think is pulling demand forward. But somewhere along the way, we're going to have to pay for the party when the party is over. You know, uh, we talk about the poor performance of the economy. I'm not an economist, but let me just uh, share with you numbers that strike me as interesting. If you talk to most economists, they would say trend real growth in the economy is probably around 2%. Trend real growth is derived by looking at the productivity growth of the economy, which is about 1.5%, and labor force growth, which is about a half of 1%. So trend real growth in the economy is 2%. If you talk to most economists today, they have real growth fourth quarter this year versus fourth quarter last year of 6%. So we're growing a three times trend Yet the Fed feels necessary to keep interest rates at zero. Okay, and what the Fed is doing is they're pu pushing everybody out in the risk curve. The person previously who uh, was very risk averse and bought T bills concluded, "I can't survive on zero, so I'm going to take duration risk and I'm going to buy T bonds." The T bond buyer says, "Well, one percent doesn't work for me. I'm going to buy industrial bonds." The industrial buying person concludes, "I can't get by on two or three percent, so I'm going to buy high yield." The high yield buyer says, I can't get by on four or five percent, so I'm going to buy structured credit, the structure, which is more opaque. The structured credit person says, well, given how hot the market is, I'm going to put 25 percent of my credit fund in equities. And the equity guy is now moving into Bitcoin. So everybody's moving out in the risk curve and they're being forced in that direction by very stimulative fiscal monetary policies. And, and somewhere along the way, we're going to have to pay you this price. Um, and so, you know, I have this dual uh, uh, outlook. I think the near-term outlook is probably okay. Uh, uh, Long-term, I think that we are borrowed from the future. And whenever you bought into the market, when it was selling at the present multiple of, say, 22 times or higher, you've never really made any serious money one year, three years, five years out. And I think that's what we're looking at. I think we are borrowed from the future. And uh, we should understand, as much as I voted for Biden, I voted for my values, not my pocketbook, He's talking about higher corporate tax rates, higher individual tax rates, higher capital gains tax rates. You know, we have more progressives in the government, more protectionism. You know, uh, um, they're attacking these high tech companies that are probably the main source of growth in the economy and have done a fabulous job in uh, dealing with the with the virus. I mean, it, it's a less pro business, less friendly business environment at the same time where the Fed and the Congress is just pouring more fuel in the fire. So it's a, it's a very interesting thing. You know, I, many times in your program, I quote the great John Templeton, who's observed bull markets are born in pessimism, grow in skepticism, mature in optimism, and die in euphoria. There's a meaningful chunk of the market today that's in euphoria. You see 50% price move. You see a spack a minute coming. That, that's stuff that's ringing the bell. Okay. On the other hand, I find a lot of things that uh, are attractive. So I'm finding things to do, investments to be made, but I'm very skeptical about the longer-term outlook.